Hi everybody! Today we're going to be talking about an article by Tomoyoshi Inoue on memory in deaf signers and embodied cognition of sign languages. This article explores the cognitive processes utilized by deaf signers, especially those who use Japanese sign language. The author presents a variety of research and explains how these cognitive theories can be applied to deaf signers and their practices. First, Inoue describes how deaf signers process phonological information, that is, the smallest units of contrasted meaning in their sign languages. He draws the comparison between phonemes for spoken languages and sharemes for sign languages. An example of a shareme would be the location of the sign in space, the movement of the sign, and the hand shape of the sign. All of these are arbitrary units that add up to meaning in ASL, just like phonemes are arbitrary sounds that add up to meaning in spoken languages. Evidence for shareems comes from observation and experimentation with the deaf that shows they make similar mistakes as hearing speakers when processing lexical items that are similar on the phonological level. For example, a deaf signer might confuse two signs in discourse that have the same hand shape, like the sign for woman and the sign for cool, just like hearing speakers might confuse two words that sound the same, like boat and vote. This supports the idea that deaf signers actually process language much like hearing speakers do, but that the difference relies on the language itself. Further evidence for this was found in the rehearsal strategies used by deaf signers. So whenever they're asked to remember something, a memory experiment, if they actually incorporate signed information, signing themselves, fingerspelling themselves, what have you, they're actually more successful at remembering, just as hearing speakers are more successful at remembering when they use some kind of rehearsal technique that incorporates some part of their spoken language. Next, Anoa discusses the iconicity of sign language. The question here is whether sign languages are easier to remember because their signs, their words, actually relate to physical items in physical space. Research on semantic cues in sign language, however, has found that there's so much more to understanding and meaning in sign language than just the signs themselves. Things like facial expression, socio-conventional expressions, and a contingency between kinetic energy and emotion in sign actually helps aid meaning. Basically, it's not just what you sign, but how you sign it that really determines meaning in sign language discourse. A great deal of sign language grammar, for example, relies on these extraneous cues. Finally, Inoue discusses time signs. Times, signs that reference time, such as last week and next year, rely on two basic directions to encode tense. For signers, past is behind you while the future is in front of you, and all signs that you use to encode time rely on these two basic directions. Karen Emery is referenced in this paper for her ego-moving metaphor of sign language. Emery believes that it isn't just these two directions that actually encode meaning for time, but that you have a central signing space in which you set up the subject of your sentence, and that you encode time or inflect time using signs around the central sign space. So it's not just these two directions and the signs themselves, but the actual movement in your central sign space that encodes meaning. <clears throat> so it isn't just these indefinite areas that are important, but the movement itself. So this whole paper has shown that signers seem to employ sign-based encoding when processing information in the real world and in lab experiments. It's interesting because it shows that your language might actually influence or even determine how you think about the world around you. There are a lot of questions about linguistic relativity right now in cognitive sciences and sociolinguistic research, and it could be really beneficially investigated by comparing the cognitive processes of deaf signers versus hearing speakers.